In this video, I'm going to discuss CSS, which stands for Cascading Style Sheets. CSS enables us to format within our HTML pages. So I'm going to go into Dreamweaver and I'm just going to create a new HTML page. I am skipping past creating the site root folder uh, because I, I'm just going to disregard I'm, or discard, excuse me, this video after or this file, excuse me, after the video. So let me go ahead and put some text on the page. So as I've indicated with the text here, I'm going to be talking about inline CSS, which is the first uh, type of CSS. We're going to be learning about three of them eventually. So if you notice on the left-hand side, because I'm in the split view here in Dreamweaver, on the left-hand side, uh, Dreamweaver has gone ahead and generated the code for us and put these all into individual paragraph tags. This last one is just because I have an extra space at the end of my document. So let's say I actually wanted to format this text, the text that's highlighted right now, the text within my first set of paragraph tags. Maybe I want it to be um, yellow on a, a purple background. And I'll, I'll increase the font size too so we can see it a little bit better on the screen. I have done something wrong. Oh, it's just a little syntactical error. That was actually my fault because I had exited out of the prediction for my um, syntax here. You might have noticed as I was writing some of that, that Dreamweaver actually predicts the code for me. Um, and I had actually been kind of typing on my own outside of that. If I had followed that a little bit more, I wouldn't have had those syntax issues there. But as we see now, the text for it within inside the text here inside that set of paragraph tags is now yellow, excuse me, the purple background, and it has a font size of 24. The downside to this type of CSS is probably very evident right now. Every time I want to change to use this if I want to use this for the next line and the next line and the next line and presumably if this was an actual web page I might have 40 or so paragraph tags every single time I'm going to have to include these instructions let me go ahead and you know, every time I I want to use them and that can be uh, extremely tedious so inline CSS does not allow us to reuse the code uh, in that we have to keep rewriting it with each tag. As a result, this kind of increases the length of our code. It just gets bulky. Um, also, we want to keep this to a minimum, this inline CSS. In fact, by minimum, I mean hopefully, you know, nothing that's inline CSS because of this bulky, increases the code, makes it difficult to reuse it. It's difficult to change it. Like, let's say I wanted to change something here, like the color. Well, now I've got to go back and change it on the next line and change it on the next line. And that could potentially be introducing errors into the document. 
You might have noticed or seen popping up on the screen when I had these selected over on the right hand side. This is my CSS styles panel. If you don't already have this open, uh, it is uh, accessible through the window menu, the CSS styles panel. And I could actually be making changes here rather than, oops, I must, I thought I had selected that green. Um, looks like I selected the white instead. So I could actually be making my inline changes over in the CSS styles panel, but I wanted us to look at it in the code view because I think that by doing that, we get a good idea of what's actually happening here. CSS is its own language, you know, so it's different syntax than HTML. Essentially, we start out with the style, a property, a colon, the value for that property, and then a semicolon. And we would do that within each tag. I'm just writing it over here on the side, and I can go ahead and increase the size of this page uh, so that you're clear on what we're we're doing. If you looked at the code view, it's the style and then within quotation marks there, a property and its value. You might be wondering where all these properties are and a lot of them are already uh, in Dreamweaver for us. But also on Blackboard, I have bookmarked a page that gives you a list of all of the properties that could be used for CSS. Okay, so just to conclude and sort of wrap up our video on inline CSS, this is our first type of CSS where we are adding the code inside the individual tags. They could be paragraph tags or ordered lists or any of our tags. We are actually adding the formatting within that individual tag. As a result, we end up with, you know, we end up with the formatting, but the downside is that it can't be reused. We'd have to copy it into each tag and then it increases the length of our code. And in general, we should try to keep to this type, this style of, or this type of CSS should be a, a last resort. We should look to one of our other two types. Those would be internal, which is also known as embedded or external CSS. And I'm going to be discussing each of those in separate videos.